Hi, Albert. Congratulations on making it to the finals. Thank you. What's your name? Joanne, and this is my husband, Stacy. Hi, hey, Albert. I met you guys all. I met you guys yeah, all. And that, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Albert, tell us how, are we Are we in picture? Okay. Tell us how you were chosen to be on Survivor. Uh, originally, I was an applicant for the show, The Amazing Race. My friend and I, who's also a big Survivor fan, uh, applied for The Amazing Race in January. Made it pretty deep in the casting process for that. Got a little, got pretty close, um, but didn't make the cut. They gave me an opportunity to apply for Survivor based on how far we had gotten in The Amazing Race, and I was so fortunate to get it and to make it onto the show. I love this game. This game is amazing, and I feel my I feel so blessed just to have an opportunity to play it once. Hopefully, hopefully it's not the last time I get to play. I would love to play again, but yeah, to me it was something really special, really unique. I, I'm, I consider myself very lucky to be part of such an elite group of people that have gotten to play this awesome game. So I, I got to know, how did you turn Brandon? What happened? After they were, they beat you up so bad. How did you make that happen? Right. Well, you know the interesting thing, and I came into this game with a big idea in mind. I was, I wasn't gonna muscle my way to the end and you know kind of play like Ozzy. I'm just gonna win everything type. I wanted to socially engineer my way to the end, and I knew that the only way to do that is know what makes each person tick. So you got to tell somebody what they want to hear. It's different people want different strokes for different folks sometimes, and there's different grounds that make people feel closer to you or connected to you. And for him, I actually experienced a genuine, real connection to God. I'm, I'm a God-fearing man myself. I never expected coming out here to play a million dollar strategy game would happen. But that's something that Brandon and I had connected over. So when I knew that I had that, I felt like that's something that I could bring to the table that can make him feel, wait a second, Albert's somebody I like. Albert's somebody I want to play with. And ultimately, Albert's somebody that I want to protect. Granted, he made a, a move that, you know, in survivor gameplay is a foolish play. But I was, I was, you know, aggressive enough to say, I'm not going to quit. The way things looked for me, I was dead. I was yes. a dead man walking. Every single person that camp told me, you're out of the game. And to me, that's, you know, a lot of people might quit there, but I felt like I would made good enough bonds with these people that if I could tell them, listen, man, this is me. This is who I am. I could at least have them know I'm a person they want to keep around and somebody they want to continue to play the game with. So you think it hurt you not giving the necklace back with the jury? No, because giving it back would have hurt me more because I would have been out of the game. <laughs> like, that's, that's the thing. You know, it's, 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 a, it's a damned if you do, damned if you don't. And, you know, I was hoping that the jury would take a more rational, level-headed approach to their selection, not vote emotionally. I mean, any one of them in the right mind, if, if you know that you give this back, you're out of the game. I don't think anybody coming into this game on day one said, hey, guys, at one point in the game, somebody's going to give you immunity, but if you give it back, you're out. I'm just going to tell you that right now. That's the scenario I was in, and there's no way that I could give it back because I'm literally just walking out of the game. And I, I really prepared too hard for this game and invested too much in this game to just literally, that, that, to me that would be like quitting. It's the equivalent of quitting. It's saying, you know what, I'm going to treat this like it's real life, not like it's a game for a million dollars. It's like playing a poker hand against somebody and saying, hey, listen, don't put your money in. I have the best possible hand. Just save your money. No, you're playing poker there to win their money. And you know what? I'm going to play it to get all their chips. And I was playing the game to win. And that's, that was my model from day one, and that's the, the way I kept playing it. So what was the most difficult question you were asked at final jury? The most difficult part of the question in final jury were all the questions I didn't receive. I really thought I was going to get a lot more questions and a lot more of an opportunity to present my case. That's the number one thing that haunts me to this day. I replay final tribe in my head literally every day because there's dozens of points that I just didn't say, things that I, that I don't think the jurors were aware of, that moves that I made, plays that I made, and reasons why I, I really should have won the game. And to me, it, it just it feels like I was cheated a little bit because I didn't have an opportunity to present my case, and I feel like I underperformed. I feel like I had so much better ammunition you know, that I could have used against my opponents and, and used to present why I really deserve to win the game. But you know, I, I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not upset about how I played. I know I got airballed by the jury tonight. So what? I, I really felt like I came and I played a kick-ass game. I played the best I could from day one to day 39. Fortunately, you know, you can never control what a jury is going to do because they're emotional human beings. Excellent. Thank you, Albert. Thank we you. enjoyed can we watching get, you. Get a picture yeah. of you. Of